Yeah, you, you can do that too. All right, so happy June, happy Pride Month. We are uh, in the midst of a series called Embracing Radical Self-Care. So last week we looked at the roots of self-care and how it actually, this, this concept came in the 1950s as something that doctors would prescribe, these certain uh, practices or tasks that they would prescribe to patients to do in order to feel and know their self-worth. And we looked at the kind of the evolution of self-care over the years and how, you know, with most things, it can begin to get a little bit co-opted by uh, the, the popular media and various things. And so we're going to dive deep into uh, this month really getting to the core of self-care. Today, we are exploring this idea of self-care as community care. So we're going to go for a little bit of a twist on this. So in a world that, that often emphasizes individual well-being, it is essential to recognize that self-care alone cannot provide the deep healing that we need at the collective level. So self-care practices are important to sustain us, to create the balance in our lives so that we do not become overwhelmed or so sick and tired of life that we actually become sick and tired to enjoy life. And yet simply saying to someone, you need to do more self-care, can actually be a very privileged statement, right? So there's this tweet that went viral by Nikita Valerio a few years ago. And they said, shouting self-care at people who actually need community care is how we fail people. So we started the conversation again last week by looking at how these messages in the media tell us, you know, buy more, get this or do this, something outside of ourselves in order to feel worthy or whole. Right? How these messages say, like, work hard and then play hard, or you deserve it. And these things are often to sell products of such things to self-medicate, perhaps like alcohol or various entertainments. But this misses the mark on true self-care because it perpetuates this kind of hustle mentality, this individualized, like, pick yourself up by the bootstraps, this rugged individualism that makes us think that we could or even should be able to do this thing called life by ourselves. And not only, from my experience, is this hard, it is also incredibly isolating and it puts us on this path of that is completely unsustainable so if we truly want to live out loud and live our life to the fullest we must realize that it takes a village and to lean into the support and care of our community we can't truly enjoy and experience the fullness of life when it comes at the expense of others. So we have to look at how these systems of oppression and financial systems built with only a few on top are not only unnatural, but are unsustainable. So if we turn to the natural world as an example, we will see that the nat natural state of the universe is one of reciprocity. We live in a reciprocal universe. And we can see this in various examples, such as in nature, the instinct of mutual grooming. Anyone that has cats will know <laughs> that they love to groom each other. And for my cat particularly, they love to groom me. <laughs> especially when I have my really short hair in the back. I don't know, that's her favorite spot. <laughs> and, you know, it indicates that there is this uh, close bond or there's this need to um, connect and support each other. We can also 
turn to the natural world and see this example of the reciprocal nature of the universe by looking at the shark and the remora fish. So remoras actually eat the scraps of the prey that the shark eats. And not only that, they courageously fly into the mouth of the shark and they eat the parasites inside the shark's mouth. And the shark welcomes this because otherwise those parasites would irritate the shark's mouth. So in turn, the shark somehow intuitively knows not to eat the remora fish. So think about that, how nature gives this example of working together and what some may normally seen as predator or prey actually support each other in this symbiotic relationship. So what does reciprocity really mean? Well, it's the practice of an exchange for mutual benefit. And then you may say, well, what does this have to do with our theme of self-care? Well, to simply preach self-care without also cultivating community care and reciprocity, then too would be missing the mark. Do you all know the actual, like, literal definition of sin just means to miss the mark? Yeah. So we don't really talk about sin here. But uh, we're, we're talking a little bit about how sometimes in our culture and society, we miss the mark on things. So we want to get back into integrity with the truth and the wholeness. And I think that turning to the natural world is such a great way because the planet, Mother Earth herself, nature, animals, they don't have this thing called, uh, you know, the mind and the self-talk like we do that can get in our way of those natural instincts and intuition, right? So for us sometimes humbling ourselves to be willing to turn to and look at the natural world for an example can be a great reminder to come back to our natural way of being. So I wanna dig in a little bit into this idea of reciprocity and explore this idea of community care and mutual aid how it can benefit all of humanity, and how we can embrace this concept even more fully at Ahava as a spiritual community. So what I know from a spiritual perspective is that everything we need, want, desire, already exists within this one perfect whole and complete universe. And when we align with this flow, when we align with this truth and lean into the support of the universe, everything we desire already exists. It is there. And what this looks like is spirit, God, life, universe, whatever word works for you, showing up in, as, and through all of the individuals around us. So it's not like we pray and affirm and magically manifest things to then fall from the sky, right? We have to align and attune our eyes to see that it is already there. And then this wholeness and abundance and all that we desire, we will see showing up around us through the individual love and support, the words of affirmation, the acts of service, the hug, the kindness of all the individuals around us. Have you ever considered how you might actually be someone's answered prayer? Showing up at the right time, at the right place, saying something that you find yourself kind of confused that you're even saying to someone, and then they're like, oh, that is exactly what I needed right now. Making a wrong turn and then all of a sudden noticing someone on the side of the road needing help and you happen to have the help that they need. These moments are how the universe uses us to show up to be the support for each other. So when we live in integrity, 
with who we are and what we value. When we live in integrity by quieting the mind and allowing this truth to lead and to guide us, we open up to all the good that is seeking to be expressed through us so that we can move from simply survival mode to thriving and working together on behalf of the collective growth and the expansion of our entire collective consciousness. So in our pursuit of personal growth, of wellness and well-being, self-care practices are so important to nurture our minds and our bodies and our spirit and to seek that balance and experience that restoration. And when we delve deeper into the realm of self-care, we can see that the true healing lies in the interconnection of our collective experience. To recognize that our well-being is inextricably linked to the well-being of all of those around us. It's in our human nature to want to help others. We see this so much in times of crisis, in natural disasters. You know, uh, here in Kentucky, we've had many we, uh, recently with the flooding and the tornadoes. And people turn out, do they not? We show up. We will give the shirt off our back to help our neighbor when they are in crisis. But what would it be like to actually embrace this way of being as a mindset every day, right? Like, why does it take some kind of crisis for us to remember our humanity? How could we move through the world in this place of generosity every day, being willing for someone to move ahead of us in traffic, to live from this community mindset of we are all moving together as a collective whole on this trajectory of life that is ever growing and ever expanding together. To live from a community mindset instead of an individual, what can I get mindset. What's for me? What's the best for me? Well, what if the best for you is the best for all? We started to see a shift in this during the lockdown of COVID-19 when our humanity became, you know, more heightened and displays of wanting to care for each other, practices, you know, of wearing a mask, practices of giving to those who were sick by providing meals, uh, supporting our essential workers and care. This aspect of who we are really came to the forefront of our awareness because everything else kind of calmed down. We were able to focus on it. You know, we didn't have our day-to-day -day stressors and our regular routine that from that place of feeling a little bit slow, a little bit more calm, we were able to focus on our attention on the need at hand. So I see that these are very much linked because as we practice self-care and we ourselves are at that place of feeling peace and calm and balance, we are more able to give. We feel the generosity. We feel the flow that we have something to give. And at the same time, when we are in a place of stress and crisis, what would it take to lean into the support of others? And to give others the opportunity, the gift of giving. Because it really does feel good to give, yes? And so what I know is that Ahava CSL has long been 
this beacon of love and compassion and support for its members and community. We are so blessed with a vibrant and diverse and intergenerational spiritual community made up of individuals who truly love and support and care for each other. Made up of individuals that in most other places in our life, we may not all be in the same room together. But when we come here as a spiritual community, we can see and care and love for each other in ways that we may not always have the opportunity to do in the world when it can be so divided by various factors, right? So we possess this immense potential to be a resource for one another, especially if we can put certain structures in place to support that. So we have an amazing pastoral care team who provides meals and rides for those dealing with illnesses. We have our food pantry, both for our community and beyond. We have our yearly holiday support projects that Reverend Cynthia has started from the very beginning. So what would it look like now to extend these things even further to support the day-to-day -day needs in our community. This is a conversation I've been having recently with several people. Like, how can we extend this idea of pastoral care beyond rides and meals to, you know, the single mothers in our community who are way overwhelmed? What could this look like? What needs are actually in our community? And what are the resources and the talents that we have? And how can we match those together? So... Each of us has a, a unique gift, talents, resources to offer. And so if we come together and support each other, it creates, again, that reciprocal nature. Giving what we have to give and asking for the support and receiving in times of need. Embracing the reciprocal nature of the universe, this is one of our core principles in the science of mind philosophy, that we are one. And acknowledging that by giving, we also have to be willing to ask for help when needed. And this strengthens the bonds of our community. And yet, sometimes the hardest thing to do is to ask for the support when we need it. Yes? Anyone agree? <laughs> so I, I'm interested in disrupting this false narrative of uh, success somehow being this individual pursuit of doing life well alone. To disrupt the narrative that success is somehow being an uh, individual way of accomplishing something. And instead, what would it look like as success being the collective well-being of our community as a whole? And we have some work to do, yeah? Yeah. Like, you know, just look, look around, open your eyes, look around. You will see the number of people, not only in our Lexington community, but beyond and around the world. The number of people living in poverty is at an all-time high. The rates of depression and anxiety, and especially among teens, is at an all-time high. Hate crimes, at an all-time high. So what are we doing? As in a collective, we are experiencing extreme disease, disease, out of balance. So it's time to create a shift, a paradigm shift where a massive collective healing in our collective consciousness is needed in order for all of humanity to thrive, not just for a few to thrive and others to barely survive. Embracing the reciprocal nature of the universe means giving what we have to give and asking for the support and being willing to receive the support when need, such that all can thrive. 
And so this is where, as a spiritual community, embracing this concept of mutual aid is a powerful expression of community care. So what is mutual aid? You may hear this, this, this phrase is becoming more and more popular these days. So there is a doctoral candidate from the University of Georgia, go dogs, uh, in the social work department that uh, his name is Joel Eisler, and he says it is, mutual aid is moving beyond the idea that we should compete for resources and depend on structures of power to provide for us when we are capable of doing so together. It is something we should be doing throughout the daily crises of our lives in an unjust society, not just as reactions to crisis. So mutual aid is an example of community care when individuals come together to support each other based on the principles of solidarity, reciprocity, and compassion, and empathy. It is a beautiful embodiment of our shared humanity and the recognition that we are truly stronger together. So in our multi-generational spiritual community, what could that look like? Well, it can involve offering assistance with daily el uh, errands for our elders, organizing mentorship programs for our youth, creating or supporting a uh, network for those that are going through challenging times. It could look like offering temporary child care or long care to families that are overwhelmed. It could look like offering tech support to those who are not so tech savvy. So all of these things are very real examples in our community, yes? There are things that I hear as needs, and there are things that I see that there are individuals within our community that are looking to give and share. So I'm interested, and when I say I'm interested, it doesn't mean I'm interested in doing, but I'm interested in holding the vision for creating a structure to expand this idea of pastoral care to uh, mutual aid within our community. And if this is something that sings to you, if this is something that feel, fills, feels, feels and feels good, and fills your heart with love, please, please let me know. Because there could be a new team that emerges to create a structure to connect these resources within our community. It could be as simple as a bulletin board, posting a little note card of, I need to borrow a lawnmower to mow my lawn, and someone else picking it up and making the connection, posting, I have this to give, picking it up, connecting, right? So engaging in mutual aid, we get to generate authentic connections and community care. We come together on, on Sundays, and it feels good. We have the music that lifts us up. We have the message. We get our hugs and our coffee, and we have that moment of connection but then what do we do throughout the week when we go back to our lives that are often consumed with stressors? And, and do we have to wait all the way until next Sunday again to feel that connection and love? Like, how can we come together as a community and create those deeper connections in our daily lives? So I invite you just to take a moment now, just to, just to breathe, to listen to your heart, and consider what are some of the resources, some of the skills, some of the, the talents that you possess that you would love to see, contrib that you would love to contribute and to see offering to those here around you in our beloved community. And not only those in the room, we have a number of people that join us online only. We have a number of people that join us online only partially because they don't have a way to get here. That's another resource. So consider how can you extend a helping hand to those around you. And imagine then what is possible when we begin to embrace this culture of mutual aid within this community. 
not only within the Ahava community, we can start it here, right? Kind of like a little incubator, but then what if we were to take this idea and actually be a hub for community care within the greater Lexington area? So when we commit to participating actively within our community by giving of our time and our talent and our treasure, we must also then be willing to ask for support in times of need. Because I can see this community now, everyone showing up, I can give this, 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 and this, and then holding back and staying quiet when you actually have a need. Because in our Western culture, this individualistic Western culture, we can resist asking for help because we believe that self-sufficiency is somehow a sign of strength, whereas vulnerability and interdependence are seen as weaknesses. But I invite you to consider how asking for support is actually an act of courage and trust. Life presents challenges to all of us, and we must overcome our resistance to leaning into the support and care when we need it, knowing that it's okay to ask for help, to be vulnerable, and to offer that gift for someone else to give when they are feeling that they have something to give. And together we can weather any storm that emerges and come out even stronger on the other side as a more connected and empowered community. So to wrap it up, I want to, uh, again, acknowledge that self-care is a very vital part of our well-being, and sometimes it's not enough. So to thrive, we must recognize the transformative power of community care. And let us heed the wisdom of that tweet Never did I think I would be like quoting a tweets <laughs> on a Sunday. But it's our culture these days. But heed the wisdom of that tweet by Nikita Valerio saying that shouting self-care at people who truly need community care is a disservice. So I believe that Ahava is a wellspring of unconditional love and support and generosity for our entire bluegrass region. And by embracing reciprocity and engaging in this practice of mutual aid, we are creating direct connections and community that fosters growth and resilience and belonging. And it is needed now more than ever. So I invite you this week to embrace the spirit of generosity, to give what you can, whether it is of your time, your financial resources, your talent, or your expertise. And again, to listen to and be willing to ask for the help and support you need, knowing that you are surrounded by a community who sees the truth of who you are, who sees your wholeness, no matter what. So asking for help is a sign of courage, not weakness. And we will always see the truth of your being and be willing to lend a helping hand. So let us embark on this journey together of self-care as community care, thriving individually and collectively. And may love guide our actions and compassion fuel our endeavors of acts of service and care, knowing that this is the cornerstone of our community. And we wouldn't be here without you and for that, I am grateful. So let us take this into prayer. Closing your eyes if that's comfortable or just finding a place to have a nice soft gaze. I began by just connecting with your breath. And letting go. <sighs> Dropping into the center of your being. That place in space 
that is the infinite. That place and space within your being that is one with all life. Knowing and recognizing the one life as love, as joy, as peace, as freedom. And knowing that this one life is expressing in, as, and through each and every one of us right here, right now. Moving through our entire physical, energetic, mental, spiritual, emotional bodies. Love, <clears throat> love, peace, joy, freedom, creativity is here now. It is the very essence and nature and truth of each and every one of us. So we take this moment to open our hearts, to feel the love that is moving us, to feel that which is stirring within our soul, to know what is ours to give and to open to the reciprocal nature of the universe that is always flowing, knowing that we always have something to give, and knowing that we are willing to receive. For it is in the partnership of the giving and the receiving that we live in the flow of life, ever growing, ever expanding allowing this infinite nature of the universe to move through us <sighs> and knowing that love will always sustain us. That we are always backed up and supported by the infinite power of the entire universe. And that this is showing up in as and through all the individuals in and around us in this beloved community we are here to give and to receive to love and to know that love is who we are and how good it feels to be in this flow this reciprocity of giving and receiving of expressing creatively of knowing our inherent worth and power and to give and to give from the overflow knowing that we are whole, perfect, and complete, that everything that we desire is right here. So I am so grateful, mm, so grateful to speak this truth, so grateful to acknowledge the wholeness, the oneness, the love that is right here, right now, ever present in this eternal now moment. Mm. So with great gratitude, I simply release this word into the action of the law, the law that always says, yes, 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 my beloved, it is done. And it is so. And together we say, and so it is.